Hi, I'm Diana Rendina, and I'm going to show you how to create a layout of your library space or your classroom using Microsoft Excel. I'm a big fan of Excel because I find that it's really approachable for a lot of people, and it's an easy tool to grasp. A lot of us already have familiarity with it. What you're seeing right now is a layout that I've created of my library space that shows some details like where our computer lab is, where our library shelves are, how we have our teaching area set up, and different things like that. This one's a pretty detailed layout, but yours doesn't have to be this detailed. I just have gotten into this and been doing this for a couple of years, so that's kind of how I've come about creating our layout. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create one today. And what you're going to do is start by opening up a new workbook in Excel. And as you can see, when you open up a new workbook, it doesn't really come out in a nice square grid, which is what we want to create a kind of imitation graph paper. So what we're going to do is click the first column and drag across, and then we're going to go to Format and Column and Width. So I'm going to try 0.15, and a lot of this is just kind of experimentation as you figure out what's going to work best for you. The goal is to get it nice and square-like. So right there I've got it at 0.20, and that's kind of a good square. But if you insert a shape, so I'm going to make this one 2 by 3. And then when I rotate it, I'm going to see if it's 2 by 3 the other way. And it more or less is, it's a little bit off, but it's close enough. So that is what's going to work for my computer. So now I've established a grid. Next thing I need to do is establish the boundaries of my space, which for today I'm not going to be doing my actual space. I'm just going to show you a theoretical one. But we'll just say that this is about the size of my space. This would be assuming that each of these squares is one square foot. You can do it with different proportions. I just find that works best. And I want to go ahead and give it outside borders. Um, and you might even want to do thick outside borders. That's up to you. Um, so that you can see what you have to work with. Now it's got a nice thick box border so I can really see where things are. So once you've got the basic outline of your space, you know what area you have to work with. The next thing you want to do is start putting into place anything that's a permanent object, something that isn't moved that's permanently in your space. And for libraries, a lot of times this would be wall shelving. So what I'm going to do in this one is just create some theoretical wall shelving on several of the walls. And I'm going to click and drag across the cells. So we'll just say that there's one foot wide shelving all along this wall. And I'm going to come over here to paint and I'm going to give it a color. Now another thing in my library that's completely fixed is my circulation desk. It never moves. So we'll go ahead and just put in a circulation desk down here. Now normally if I was creating this layout, I would make sure to measure the distance of the circ desk from that back wall. But we'll just say for now that it's you know, about five or six feet back. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a different color just so I can kind of tell what it is. And since mine is a wooden color, we'll just go ahead and go with that beige. Another thing that's obviously going to be fixed is the doorway. So I'm going to go ahead and put in something to mark where the door is. And to do that, I'm going to insert a shape. And for doors, I just like to use a line. So in this version of Microsoft, you can click over there or you can actually just draw it. So we're going to draw a door right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw another one just so I can kind of see where the doors to my library are. Now that I've got that, I can kind of see a nice outline of my space and I want to start adding in some furniture. So we're going to use insert shape again and start creating that furniture. You're going to want to use those grids to help scale as you draw your furniture. And hopefully by now you've already taken measurements of everything in your space so you know the dimensions of your tables and your chairs and any other furniture items that you might have. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a square out here. And I'm going to change the size of this one. So my tables in this one, we're going to make them be two feet wide. And then we're going to count over here, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to make it six feet long like that. And so we're just going to call that the table. 
And I'm going to go ahead and change the colors of them too, just to kind of make it look a little bit more like the tables that I have in my library, which are gray. And I'm just going to change the outline because I feel like it. But that's, you know, totally up to you. Now, because I have six of these tables in my space, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste and create some more. Now, once you've got them kind of in the relative general areas, you can start moving things around. Ideally, you want to start with having it be set up the same way as your space, but you can move things around as well. And another feature I want to mention is that whenever you have one of these shapes selected, you get this little green dot. You can click that and rotate, and that lets you kind of move around and change the arrangement of how your tables are set up. Another thing that you can do with tables that works really nice is if you want to add the chairs to them, um, there's a nice little trick for that that I'm going to go ahead and show you. So I'm going to drag a square over here. And I'm just going to change the color to blue. My chairs are probably about two feet square. So here is my chair. Right now it's kind of sitting on top of this. So what I'm going to do is arrange it over here. And I'm going to send backward. And now it's underneath the table. And now I've got a couple of chairs. Now for my purposes, I don't necessarily need to attach the chairs to the table, but if you wanted to do that, if you have furniture items that always kind of go together, one thing that you can do is called grouping items. So I'm going to go ahead and click the table, and then since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to hold Command. On a PC, you'd hold Control, and select the two chairs. So all three are selected now. And then I'm going to go to Format and Group, and I'm going to group those items together. So now, anytime I move this, I move all of the items together. And if I rotate them, they all rotate together. So it makes it a lot easier if, as you're rearranging things, especially tables and chairs, or if you want to draw some computers on your computer tables, it makes it a lot easier to kind of rearrange and change things up. You can use other shapes for different types of furniture too. Squares and rectangles are going to be the most common one, but you might have some circular tables. So now we've got our nice little table, and it's going to sit over here. So that's kind of the basics of just creating furniture items and moving them around in your space. And the fun thing about this is that once you get all of your items in place, like I've got here, it really gives you a nice picture of how your library looks. And it lets you see what would happen if you moved your shelving unit to a different location. Or if you tried rotating your computer lab around and moving it into different spaces. On mine, I've actually also added little lightning icons everywhere there's an outlet because that helps me as I'm planning because I know where I have electrical power. It also helps me to get a good picture of how the traffic flows work in my library so I can see any places where there might be some potential traffic jams and work on fixing those. That's the basics of how to create a layout in Microsoft Excel. A lot of it's just kind of playing around and experimenting and seeing what works best for you. So feel free to play around and good luck with creating your layouts.